Good morning, children. I am Subodip Ghosh, and I will be taking your biology classes in this session. I hope you are all doing well amidst the severity of the current pandemic situation. I am thankful to the school authorities who have endeavored to conduct such online tutorial and classes. There are many students who have not got the opportunity to avail books. but it is my advice to you all to focus on the video sessions very carefully it will be very much useful to you as you can go through them a number of times and find the recorded mechanism very much satisfactory you will get interested in this and continue the classes regularly good morning students Today we are going to discuss about the transport of food and minerals in plants. In plants the transport system is mainly needed for two main reasons. One for transport of water and minerals which are absorbed by the roots from the soil and for transportation of the food prepared by the leaves to different parts of the plant in comparison to animals plants do not need a specific type of transport system but the materials travel through a much longer distance as compared to animals for example in tall trees water travels from root to the top of the tree which is about 20 meters tall transport of materials in plants is less complex as compared to that in animals as food is made within a leaf it dissolves in water dissolved food enters the phloem cells of the veins from here the food may be transported in any direction within the plant the transport of food from one part to another part of a plant is called translocation unlike animals plants they do not have a living connective tissue like blood to transport minerals and food to various parts of the body transportation in plants is carried out by a well developed transportation system called the vascular system it consists of two special types of tissues namely the xylem and the phloem now it is also called the complex vascular system because these tissues the xylem and the phloem they are not only comprising of a single tissue but of four different tissues combined together to make this complex transportation system na xylem conducts water and dissolved minerals from the roots to the leaves of a plant the xylem it is composed of the tracheids the vessel elements the parenchyma and the fibers the tracheids this diagram you can see it is of the tracheids the tracheids are long thin dead cells that are connected together at the tapered ends their cell wall contains lignin which provides structural support to the xylem next 
we shall come to the vessel elements the vessel elements here you can see it in the diagram the vessel elements are the tube like dead cells that are connected together end to end they are wider and shorter than tracheids and form a long tube like structure the ends of these cells contain perforation plates which have a number of holes in the cell walls as you can see in the figure these are the perforation plates this allows water and dissolved minerals to travel freely between the cells next is the xylem parenchyma the xylem parenchyma is the only living component of xylem tissues here you can see the xylem parenchyma which is given in the diagram you can see that the xylem parenchyma they are elongated cells containing a nucleus the xylem parenchyma conduct and store food for the plant the xylem fibers will be coming the next they are sclerenchymatous fibers connected with the tracheids and the vessels here are the xylem fibers they are dead cells with thick cell walls they provide strength and rigidity to the xylem tissues so children you have just learnt about the xylem you have learnt that the xylem conducts water and dissolved minerals the conducting channels are called tracheids and xylem elements the conduction in the xylem is mostly unidirectional which occurs from the roots to the leaves you have learned about the four xylem elements the tracheids the vessels the parenchyma and the fibers you have also learned that only the xylem parenchyma is living in the fifth point you should remember that in addition to conduction the xylem provides mechanical support to the plant now we shall study and discuss about another conducting tissue that is the phloem the phloem is another transport system in plants that carries food or sucrose a type of sugar from the leaves to other plant parts sucrose is an end product of photosynthesis it is a complex permanent tissue present almost parallel to the xylem in contrast to xylem this consists of living cells called the sieve tubes elements the end wall and side walls of cf tubes have cf areas which allow soluble substances to pass through once the food molecules enter the phloem they are transported upwards downwards or in lateral direction the phloem transport is bidirectional that means the transportation occurs in two 
directions. The phloem is found in all parts of the plant. It is made of living tubular cells which provide passage for downward movement of sugars, organic compounds and minerals as plant sap by the leaves to other parts of the plants. Now, the phloem consists of the sieve tube, the companion cells, the phloem parenchyma and the phloem fibers. Here in this diagram, we can see the different components of the phloem. The CF tubes, they are long, slender and living cells connected end to end and form a tube-like structure that conducts the food material throughout the plant body. In all flowering plants, the CF tubes have perforated ends and form the CF plates. Here you can see the CF pores and the CF plates. The CF plates allows the plant sap to diffuse easily from cell to cell. Next, we shall come to the companion cells. Here are the companion cells. The companion cells are specialized parenchyma cells located outside and alongside the CF tubes and are connected by a number of channels to the CF tubes. The companion cells help in the absorption of the material to be transported in plants. They can also deliver sugars and other substances into the CF tubes from the neighboring cells. Usually, food moves downward from the leaves through the phloem into the stem and roots. There, it enters the cortex where simple sugars are converted to starch and get stored. So, students, now we shall recapitulate about what we have learnt about the phloem. The phloem conducts the food prepared by the leaves. The conducting channel is the CF tubes. The conduction in phloem is bidirectional from leaves to growing parts or storage organs and vice versa. In all the phloem elements, CF tubes, companion cells and phloem parenchyma are living. Only phloem fiber is dead. Phloem acts as the conduction tissue. It does not perform any mechanical function for the plant. Last but not the least, the CF tube cell do not have any nuclei, but they still remain living. It is because they are dependent on the adjacent living companion cells which develop from the same original meristematic cells. So, students, that's all for today. Just see the video very carefully and next day in the next class we shall learn about the absorption of water and minerals and their conduction. Thank you students. Have a nice day. Remain safe. Be healthy.
गुड बाय